Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brian Penovich here. We're still talking about the nor'easter that's going to develop this weekend and what kind of impacts we're going to get here in the Carolinas. We're going to see some, but there's been a pretty consistent trend that this is mainly going to be in eastern North Carolina and then northeast. But we're probably all going to still see some snow from it. And I'll explain because we're starting to see this thing kind of come together. The two pieces of energy we're watching, I actually could see the northern branch piece up here near the Canadian border and then the southern branch piece here. They're going to be moving to the south and east over time and they're going to sync up somewhere over here. There's still some question marks about how that phasing or coming together happens, but we can actually see it. Um, this is a look at the probabilities of one inch of snow right now for our area. So you can see um, we've got a pretty pretty good uh, risk of, of at least an inch of snow from about Raleigh North. I look for the blue area, by the way, because that's 50% chance or higher. Um, so you kind of see these areas that we're watching, the mountains, northwest flow, and then you look back towards uh, the areas up in Virginia. And obviously, as you go up to the northeast, this becomes a much bigger risk um, as the storm develops and becomes a pretty significant blizzard, probably for many areas um, to the north and east of us. One of the things to watch is where does that phasing occur? So we'll look at this energy here and what you're looking at here is the vorticity data here and you, I'll, I'll highlight the two pieces of energy coming across the country there's the one piece there the one piece there moving to the east by tomorrow afternoon and then sometime late friday into saturday this thing begins to crank up so if there's one thing i think it's going to be a little slower developing i think this is probably going to be more of saturday morning event uh, for many of us, probably after midnight, and then becomes a, a weekend system as it moves up the coast. So let's take a look at some of the some of the outlooks here for winter weather, just to give you a heads up for everybody in, in our area. You could see that risk, a moderate risk for impacts from central and eastern North Carolina. That becomes moderate impacts up towards northeastern North Carolina, and then obviously in the North Carolina mountains. But right now you're seeing kind of limited impacts across the, the the western part of the Piedmont into the foothills because the amount of snow is not expected to be really off the charts. So let's kind of show you the setup of this from the future cast and then we'll get into maybe some some totals because we're getting to that time frame where we'll start maybe looking at uh, putting that uh, totals map today. I think I will do a snowfall map today at four, five, and six. So here's the setup on the future cast. You can see we've got big sprawling Arctic high pressure across the country today. We're going to go through time here. Um, we'll go loop by loop here as we get this thing to develop. You kind of start to see the makings of this across the southern plains. But as we go through time, we'll start to see this slowly develop and push to the east. And the big question mark in this is all going to be how quickly we see the low pressure develop on the coast. So as this thing slowly shifts to the east, we start watching, you know, it doesn't look like much. It kind of develops over us. You'll start to see the development here as we go into Friday. As we start to see the low pressure try to develop right off the southeast coast so the area we'll be watching for development is going to be in here for low pressure developing at the surface but the trough or the upper level feature is going to be transitioning to the coast as well and sometimes that upper level feature is the one that brings us snow it's not so much the coastal system so watch as this cranks up and again we're going into friday night probably going to start as rain in a lot of locations and as we go through the overnight it starts to change to snow so this is friday night you know 9 30 maybe a burst of snow but look at the location of the low here pretty far offshore it starts pulling the moisture out quickly so you could see that's not a very long duration snowfall it's kind of you know a couple hours of flurries or snow showers and gone and then it becomes this monster as it moves up the coast and produces this heavy snow now the position of the low this is where we're still question marks you know we've got pretty good handle on this thing developing but the, the difference between this developing here or tracking there and there or here that's a huge difference even though statistically it doesn't look like that much um, but if we look at the map of the ensembles and what, the reason i show you this is i want to show you all the different variations of this guidance and how it's somewhat clustered together so i'm going to stop this here on the left is the European Ensemble, on the right is the GFS, and you can see they're all pretty tightly clustered right off the Outer Banks. This thing starts to crank up and then move northeast, but there's still enough spread where the difference from one side of the envelope, we call it, from this side to this side, is still pretty significant, but there's been a trend in all the guidance. Notice there's more L's showing up closer to the coast there and there, so for the northeast, this has really tangible impacts where it could be a much bigger storm for the northeast based on the ensembles so that's why we, we take a look at that but that's a look at it. i'm going to loop this a couple times here and i'll show you the whole loop here this is about a five-day loop here this thing developing moves over the carolinas 
and then moves up the coast. So you get the, you get the idea there. So now everyone loves seeing that, right? But you want to see the total. So let's talk about the totals. I kind of give you a, a sneak peek there briefly. Um, let's look at the ensembles first. So this is the European ensembles. You can see the spread there. Not very many have no snow. So there's going to be snow based on the European ensemble. The average on the ensemble there is about an inch. We go to the GFS, much less less bullish, probably a trace. Um, if we look at the Schreff plumes, um, which is what I start looking at, the, this is the short range ensemble. So if you look here, the, the, the black line is the mean. The mean is around an inch and a half. That's actually pretty high compared to some of the other guidance. But look at the spread. We've got one up here around 4.8 inches, and we've got three or four that are near a trace. So if we look at the last several runs of the means, there's been a trend up, but the last one trended back down. So that's something to keep an eye on. I always like looking at the shrefs in the short term because it gives you a pretty good range of possibilities. Um, but as always, I always like blending the guidance. So people always say, you know, Brad, what you don't look at single specific data. I look at all the data. That's what you should always do. Don't look at one map. That's why I hate people that share maps only single maps and don't really talk about it. Um, so if we look at the model blender, which does a fairly good job um, giving you kind of representation of where the snow is going to be and kind of a rough idea on the totals. If we blend all the guidance together and we go through Saturday morning, 7 a.m., and then we go through Saturday afternoon, and I'll stop this Sunday morning um, at 7 a.m., you kind of get the general idea. Um, the heavier amounts are clearly going to be up here, and in that range you're looking at one to two to three to four the high mounts are right there in northeastern north carolina and then back towards the charlotte area you're looking at about the average has been about a half an inch maybe slightly more so the trace to one inch totals are probably looking likely in this area with one to two in this area and then getting over here one to three and maybe four to six up in here and then the mountains obviously you get northwest flow on the back side um, of this system i'm still waiting for some more guidance to come in this morning but I will have the first official snowfall map of my forecast. Um, and it'll look probably set up similar to this, but the totals might be a little bit different based on the trends that we're seeing. The one thing I, I will pay very close attention to are these Shreff plumes. You know, how much of a spread? Is it narrowing? Is it getting trend? And I look at the trends of the last four means, um, and this is pretty telling, the fact that it shot up, but then it's coming back down. So there is, we do, do know a lot about this storm. It's actually much more than you would think. Um, the real the real question marks aren't so much for our area, to be honest with you. Um, I know this thing's going to develop over us. We're probably going to see some snow Friday night. The real questions and the bigger forecast dilemmas, which are out of my neck of the woods, are going to be up here in the Northeast. So folks up there, you have a much bigger dilemma than us in the Carolinas. But one thing I will say that we haven't talked enough about, there's going to be really strong winds with this. This is going to be um, what you might refer to as a bomb cyclone. It is going to rapidly intensify, which means really strong northeast winds, which is where the term nor'easter comes from. These winds will be blizzard like in the snow. And even here outside of the snow, we could see gusts at the outer banks above 60 miles an hour in the Charlotte area, could see gusts 35 to 40 miles per hour. So don't don't sleep on the wind. The wind is going to be a big part of this. And remember on Saturday the temperatures are only going to be in the 30s. So the wind chills will be in the teens and 20s. So brutally cold air and cold, cold temperatures on Saturday and Sunday with the system. Of course, stay tuned for the first map update. We'll be we post that tonight and I'll have a great timing graphic hopefully put together and we'll give you a heads up for the system as we plan ahead to what's going to be a cold and yes, another wintry weekend, the third one in a row.